All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, just coming into this current NBA season, I stated that I believe that the mainstream liberal sports media will go out of their way to utilize whatever and however many Machiavellian machinations they could concoct within their mind to try to sow dissension within the ranks of the Golden State Warriors. And thus far, they've proven to be relatively successful because, as we know, there have been a series of fractures or fissures that were formed within the Golden State locker room in the aftermath of the detonation of the two resident talented mama's boys on the team, that being Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. Well, now, one of their veterans within the Golden State locker room, Mr. Sean Livingston, who I've already pinpointed as one of the two possible sources of the storyline or of the notion that was put forth a couple of days ago, where he stated, or either him or Andre Iguodala stated, that they're sure that there's no way that Kevin Durant is coming back. Now, Sean Livingston is coming forth and saying that the Golden State Warriors team is trying to move past the situation, but it's very difficult because the media, in his view, is going out of their way to keep this storyline going. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Finally, last Monday, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green had a very heated argument at the end of the regulation with the Clippers. We were just yeah. talking about this with Dante. They say they've squashed everything, but there's some tension still lingering for the Warriors. And Sean Livingston said he can't wait to see the day all of this is in the rearview mirror. Let me say this very quickly. That day may never come. That day may never, ever come. You may get into a back and forth with your lady in the house where you guys have a disagreement. Things may get testy or what have you. Hopefully not, but it may happen. That's totally different from your lady or even you trying to spaz out on your significant other out in the street. It's two totally different situations. Because when somebody's willing to spaz out on you out in the street, they're showing that they have no respect for you as a human being. That's what they're showing. So when it comes to this situation between Draymond Green and Kevin Durant, whether Kevin Durant admits it during the season or he admits it after he leaves, he has lost all respect for Draymond Green as a person because he realizes that Draymond never truly had any real respect for him as a person. And Draymond Green, once again, he's another dude who has a female spirit trapped within a man's body. He's an intelligent brother. He tries hard, but he just cannot move past that matriarchal energy that he was imbued with from his childhood. And as we all know, Kevin Durant also has that matriarchal, that black woman energy within him that he's trying to fight against because he's never been taught how to moderate himself. He's never been taught how to balance out his emotions. So this truly is a cocktail that is explosive. And I'm not quite sure if the Golden State Warriors are going to be able to overcome this. To be quite frank with you, brothers, it would not shock me at all if the Warriors did not win the championship this season. It really wouldn't. I want to see how they look after Curry comes back. I think that Curry coming back and maybe even DeMarcus Cousins, supposedly he should be ready to, to join the team by either as early as Christmas or sometime early next year. Hopefully for them, that will provide a boost and impetus that they need to move past this entire situation. Because as of right now, in my view, Kevin Durant, proverbially speaking, in regards to his tenure as a Golden State Warrior, is a dead man walking. He's ready to be out of there. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But he insists that the media has been relentless. He said in this locker room, we're all trying to let it go. Durant is trying to let it go, but it's tough when everyone else is trying to keep it going. Right, but I mean, let's be honest about this, Sean Livingston. Who do you have to blame for that? You have to blame that mama's boy, that cherry bomb in your locker room, a.k.a. Draymond Green. Who eventually is going to find that he's much more trouble than he's worth fortunately for him he fits in perfectly on that team he fits in so perfectly as a matter of fact that once again and i'm sure that certain people will disagree with me in my view i would rather trade kevin durant than trade draymond because i know that i can get back a whole bunch for kd how much are we going to get back for draymond green a player who basically averages eight eight and eight on a team that is as stacked as the Warriors. If Draymond was to play for the Brooklyn Nets or the New York Knicks, he would be nowhere near as impactful. Nowhere near. Because he's not a good offensive player. And when you're not a good offensive player, no matter how well you play defense, you have to be surrounded by great offensive players for your impact to really shine. 
And remember last year, David West stated in the aftermath of the finals, and I've cited this before, David West stated what? He said, if the media had any idea of what was going on in this locker room, they would view us completely different. They would realize what we had to transcend in order to get back to this mountaintop. And it's obvious to me, in hindsight, just looking back at what he stated, that he was referring to some type of situation last season, most likely between Draymond and Kevin Durant, that nobody really knew about. But once again, because it was happening in the locker room, in the confines of the team facility, in private, away from everybody else, it was something that they can keep under control and that Durant was not too embarrassed about. Once again, it's totally different to get into an explosive confrontation with your significant other out in public as opposed to within the privacy of your own home. Sometimes people will have an issue with you and they'll wait to get home to talk it out or hash it out. Other times, they feel the need, if you're in a dysfunctional relationship or an explosive <laughs> rapport, if you're around somebody who's cantankerous, they just can't hold it in and they don't care who you're around. They don't mind embarrassing you in front of anybody. And that's the type of person that Draymond Green is. See, the reason why Draymond respects Steph Curry is because he looks at Steph Curry as, as his superior. Draymond almost looks at the Golden State Warriors like the military. When Draymond got there, Steph was already there. So there's a certain amount of respect that Draymond has for Steph. No matter how talented Kevin Durant is, Draymond looks at Kevin Durant as his little brother because Kevin Durant came in after they were already successful, after Draymond was already there. That's how Draymond views him, no matter how gifted KD is. And then on top of that, he has a beta personality. So Draymond stays trying to punk him and trying to bully him. Well, when no Kevin one is trying to keep this story going. You no, actually, you guys are trying to keep this story going, and I know why. Because you're trying to help out your boo thing, LeBron James. You guys are going for your third consecutive championship. And you are the top dog that everybody in the NBA is coming for. And your squabbles are public. You're your screaming squabbles at fans. Your squabbles are right on the sideline. On television. In front of everyone. Nobody's probing in your locker room to hear stuff through the walls. <laughs> right. You're doing it in front of right. us. Right. Like, what do you want us to do? Yeah. And nobody's trying to make this a thing. It is the thing. If my wife threw a lampshade at me at the Thanksgiving party, and people were like, you know, I think they've got an issue... That's not probing. That's like we're throwing stuff at each other. Well, that's a very good point. And that's why I make the distinction between the type of people who are willing to wait until you get within the confines of your own home, where you guys are in private and you can hash out whatever situation or whatever issue you have, as opposed to someone who has no tact whatsoever, no decorum whatsoever. Draymond is a hood rat. That's what he is. <laughs> He's a hood rat trapped in a man's body. That's what's happening to the war. This is not a rumor. Everyone saw it. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, and then everyone saw Kate. And you can look at Steve Kerr's face. Whenever Draymond starts to explode, Steve Kerr's like, oh, if I could just trade this fucking guy, but we need him. <laughs> okay, deep about. And then everybody saw everything that KD is doing on social media. None of it. They've all talked about it. Yeah. It's something that has to be discussed. You know, the Golden State Warriors, we're going to discuss you. It's, it's Kevin Durant. It's Steph Curry. Yep. Top players in the NBA. It's going to, it's, nobody's making this a thing. Yeah. Joy with the news. Well. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go in the aftermath of this entire situation. Eventually, they are going to have to move past it to some degree even though the media is going to do their best to stop it. In addition to that, they are going to be facing teams on the basketball court who I'm sure are going to be trying to bring it up in the form of trash talk. So we'll see what happens when teams try to do that. But once again, Draymond Green is very unfortunate because he is intelligent, but he's not wise. And that's something that's very symptomatic of many of these modern day brothers who, you know, unfortunately they were never trained on how to deal with, you know, their emotions. But anyway, peace.